The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, so we're gonna continue and wrap up, uh, what is it, uh, objective or outcome number two today and then move on to three and we'll just keep going on into next week till we get through all five of them. If there's time after that, I'll look at some of the chapter tests, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, I've had several people ask about, is there going to be a review? This is the review. There isn't gonna be a specific assignment that's, that's narrowed down into, these are the problems that are on the final. The final's comprehensive, so it, anything that you've been tested over could be on the final. All right, having said all that, let's take a look at number, 64, it says find the perimeter and feet and area in square feet of the figure below. So we've got this rectangle. And this dimension is 4.5 feet and this one is 8.5 feet. Let's call this the length and this the width. So the perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width. So it would be two times 8.5 feet plus two times 4.5 feet. Two times 8.5 is 17, two times 4.5 is nine, 17 and nine is 26. So the perimeter is 26 feet. Then it says to find the area, the area, would be the length times the width. So the area would be 8.5 feet times 4.5 feet. And if we take eight, let's see here, 8.5 times 4.5, we get 38.25 square feet, 38, 38.25 square feet. And so let's see here, 38.25 square feet. Now, I wanna talk about the instructions because they could be a little bit confusing. Right here it says, if needed, round to one decimal place. So what does if needed mean? Because for instance here, I didn't round to one decimal place and you'll see that as the answer that they got. So, so what do they mean by that? Well, let's say that we were dealing with a uh, fraction like two thirds or one third, something that when you multiplied it out, it repeated and just kept going on and on, then you would need to round it, in which case round to one decimal place. But if it only goes out a few places and doesn't repeat, then go ahead and put the right answer in there. I am curious just to see what happens if we put 38.3 feet in there, whether it marks it right or not. <laughs> it did. So, uh, but anyway, technically 38.25 is the better answer. All right. I just never know what's going to happen with wall map. Sixty-five. Okay, so we've got the same kind of stuff except here we have what are called mixed units. This is five feet, six inches, and this is five feet, six inches. Ah, so this is a square, even though the picture doesn't look like it, nor my drawing, but because it has the same length as width, okay? Find the perimeter in feet. Well, the problem is the units are given in feet and inches, but six inches would be one half foot or, or 0.5 feet. So this basically is 5.5 feet, and this is 5.5 feet, converting six inches to 0.5 feet. So now the perimeter, let's see here, I guess we're supposed to go with the uh, formula that's back up here. The perimeter would be two times the length plus two times the width, which is two times 5.5 feet plus two times 5.5 feet, 
which is 11 feet plus 11 feet, which is 22 feet. So the perimeter is 22 feet, okay? So down here, 22 feet. The area would be the length times the width, which would be what, 5.5 uh, feet times 5.5 feet. And if we take 5.5 times 5.5, we get 30.25 square feet. So the area would be 35.25 square feet. Oops. Oh, <laughs> I wrote down 30 and then, I, and then I put 35 there. My bad. Yeah. Undone by my own thing. And that is always check your work before you click submit question. Otherwise, you'll be like me and make a mistake. All right. I think that's a good rule to go by because I think I did that during the homework quite a bit too. Yeah, yeah. And, and fortunately on the homework, you get another chance, but on the test, you don't. Okay. 66. Find the circumference in inches and area in square inches of the circle below. Give the exact answer using pi equals the pi symbol. And then the approximation using the fact that pi is approximately 3.14. Okay. So what do we know about the circle? We know that the radius is four inches. Recall the diameter goes all the way across the circle. So the diameter would be four inches. The radius goes from the center to the outside edge or half the diameter or four inches. Okay, I'm supposed to find the circumference. Since I'm given the radius, I'm gonna use the formula that includes the radius. So C equals two, whoops, ah, two pi R. Since the radius is four inches, C equals two times pi times four inches, which would be eight pi inches. So that is the exact circumference, okay? So eight pi inches. Then they want the approximate circumference because pi, though it's exact, it's not something we can easily deal with. So we take the original answer and we replace the pi with 3.14. If we take eight times 3.14, we get 25.12 inches. And that's the approximation, okay. 25.12, all right. Now area, we've got what pi r squared. So that would be pi times four inches squared, which is pi times 16 square inches or 16 pi square inches. So there's the exact area, 16 pi, and the units are there, square inches. And then again, we, we're gonna get the approximate one by replacing pi with its decimal approximation, 3.14. So we take 16 times 3.14, and we get approximately 50.24 square inches, let's see here, 50.24. Okay, so we've got that, that, yeah. So the exact includes pi, the approximate, we replace pi with 3.14. Any questions about that? All right, let's go on to 67. Find the surface area in square feet and volume of in cubic feet of the figure below. So this is a, a, I don't know, like a block of wood or maybe like a shoe box with the lid on. It's not a perfect cube. It doesn't have the same dimensions for length, width, and height, okay? So the formula for the surface area, let's see here, is right up here. 
Well, it's just that top one. Ah. There we go. Okay. So the surface area is two times the length times the width, plus two times the length times the height, plus two times the width times the height. So for this particular block, we'll say that the length is the 18 foot dimension, the width is the 16 foot dimension, and the height is the 13 foot dimensions. All right. So the surface area is going to be two times 18 feet times 16 feet plus two times 18 feet times 13 feet plus two times 16 feet times 13 feet. Okay. Two times 18 times 16 is 576, and that's square feet. Two times 18 times 13 is 468 square feet. Two times 16 times 13 is 416 square feet. Adding those three together, 576 plus 468 plus 416, we get 1,460 square feet. So that's the surface area. So if you were going to paint all six sides of this block, you'd want to get enough paint to cover that many square feet. Okay. Let's see. Zero. All right. The volume is the length times the width times the height. So that's going to be 18 feet times 16 feet times 13 feet. And 18 times 16 times 13 is 3,744 cubic feet because feet times feet times feet. Here, three thousand seven hundred forty four, and there we have that. Any questions there before we go on? Okay, <clears throat> problem sixty eight. Find the perimeter in meters and the area in square meters. Okay, so they want our answer in meters. So it seems to me what we need to do is rewrite all of our dimensions in meters. 0.16 meters is the correct dimension, that's in meters. We need to take two decimeters and convert that into meters. And let's see, one meter is 10 decimeters. Okay. So this would be two tenths or what, 0 0.2 meters. So 0 0.2 meters. 12 centimeters. One meter is 100 centimeters, so that would be 12 hundredths or 0.12 meters. So now I have all three dimensions written in units of meters. The perimeter is the sum of all three sides. So that's going to give us what, eight, four, so 0.48 meters. 0 0.48 meters. The area is going to be one half the base, which would be that. Oops, not let's see here. Well, that's supposed to be a parentheses. Hang on. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Let's 
and then what 0 0.16 meters and 0 0.112 meters. All right. Well, let's see. If I take 0 0.16 divided by 2, that would be 0 0.08, half of that. So 0 0.08 times 0 0.112 is 0 0.0096. Wow. Sure is. I was having doubts there. Just seemed awfully small. Okay. And finally, number 69. Find the circumference in centimeters and area in square centimeters of the circle below. All right. So for this circle, we're given the diameter. The diameter is eight centimeters. Therefore, the radius would be four centimeters. For the circumference, we could use C equals pi D, or we could use C equals two pi R to get the same result. If the diameter is eight centimeters, this would be pi times eight centimeters. And we typically put the nice number in front of the pi. So that's going to be the exact circumference. 8 pi centimeters. Then the approximate circumference, you're going to replace pi again with 3.14. So 8 times 3.14, you get 25.12 centimeters. So that's the approximate uh, circumference. 25.12, okay, area is pi r squared, so here we're not going to use the diameter, we're going to use the radius, 4 centimeters squared is going to be, ah, that darn thing keeps coming up, uh, which is going to be what, 16 pi Square centimeters. Okay. Let's see here. 16 pi square centimeters. And then this last one is going to be 16 times 3.14 square centimeters. And let's see here. What do we get? 16 times 3.1. Four is 50.24 square centimeters. 50.24 square centimeters. Well, we finally finished uh, objective or uh, outcome two. So now we're going to go on to objective three or to outcome three. Okay, so. Outcome, oops, too many bumps there. Outcome three. So give me a second here to switch this around. Okay. All right. Any questions before we continue? Nope. Okay. So here you go with outcome number three. Question number one, simplify. So we have 9u minus 3d plus 2u plus 2d. Combining like terms, we get 11u minus 1d. And I don't need to put the one in front of the D, as you can see there, how they write it. It isn't wrong if you put it there, but it isn't necessary. So 11U minus D. Also be careful. We'll see what happens here. 
uh, whether they'll, if, what if I put in a capital U, if it'll take it or not? Some, some programs do and some programs don't. Let's see what it says. Ah, it changes it. That's nice. There's another program called WebAssign, and if you put in the different uh, capital when it's supposed to be lowercase, it marks it wrong. But apparently this takes care of your mistakes for you. So that's nice. Anyway, question number one. Okay. Number two, again, simplify 10z minus 11 plus 11z minus 10. So we've got 21z minus 21 as a constant. So 21z minus 21. We do it okay? I'll just keep going unless you stop me. All righty. Number three, simplify. Four fifths F minus one sixth M plus one sixth F plus two fifths M. All right, we're gonna combine like terms. Those go together and those go together, but we can't actually add or subtract them until we get common denominators. So let's see, we've got four fifths F plus one sixth F. The common denominator of five and six is 30. I'm gonna take four fifths and multiply it by six over six to get 24 thirtieths. So four fifths F becomes 24 thirtieths F. I'm gonna take one sixth F and multiply it by five fifths to get five thirtieths. So one sixth F is five thirtieths F. 24 thirtieths plus five thirtieths is 29 thirtieths F. Oops, not feet, just plain old F. Okay. Now, let's take the next two, minus one-sixth m plus two-fifths m. Again, the common denominator there is 30. I'm going to multiply one-sixth by five-fifths to get five-thirtieths, and two-fifths by six-sixths to get twelve-thirtieths. Negative five or minus five plus twelve would be plus seven-thirtieths. M. Okay, so let's see how we're going to put that in there. We're going to go, let's see, 29 thirtieths. So 29 thirtieths. And then I'm going to use the right arrow to get out from under it. F plus seven. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Hmm, interesting. Seven thirtieths uh, M. Okay. All right. So number four, simplify. Four minus nine times the quantity, nine M plus three, plus the quantity five M minus six. Well, inside the parentheses, the quantities are not like terms. So I can't do any simplification inside. I'm forced to distribute. So I've got four, and then minus nine times nine M would be minus 81 M. And then minus nine times a plus three would be minus 27. There's just a plus sign in front of the second set of parentheses. So that's like distributing a one. So we just get plus five M minus six. 
So that's our first big step in simplification. Then we're gonna come back and combine like terms. Minus 81M plus 5M would be what? Minus 76M or negative 76M, okay? And then four minus 27 minus six. Well, four minus 27 would be what? Negative 23. And then minus six would be negative, oops, negative 29. So I get negative 76 M minus 29. Negative 76 M minus 29. All righty. Continuing on to question number five. Simplify two times the quantity 5z squared minus 4z plus 6 minus two times the quantity 2z plus 7 minus 3z squared. So Inside the parentheses, there are no like terms within each separate set of parentheses. So again, I'm forced to distribute. Two times five Z squared is 10 Z squared. Two times minus four Z is minus eight Z. And two times six is plus 12. Going on to the second set of parentheses, we're going to distribute the minus 2. Minus 2 times 2z two is minus 4z. Minus 2 times a plus 7 is minus 14. And minus 2 times minus 3z squared, minus times minus or negative times negative is positive 6z squared. Now I'm going to combine like terms, and I'm going to write them in descending powers of the variable. So I'm going to do the z squareds first. 10z squared plus 6z squared is 16z squared. Minus 8z minus 4z is minus 12z. And then plus 12 minus 14 is minus 2. So 16z squared minus 12z minus 2. Let's see, 16. Now, to do z squared, let's see here. I, I haven't had to use one of these before in this thing. Let's, if I go z and then click that. So I have to put the variable before I click on this. Now I'm going to use the right arrow key to get out of the, the, the exponent form minus 12 z minus 2. Any questions about how I dealt with that? We OK with how, the, how that works? OK. Number six, simplify. So now we're dealing with decimals. Three times the quantity, 1.3y plus 1.2w minus five times the quantity, 1.6 W minus 2.5 Y. Again, there's no like terms inside the grouping symbols, so we'll distribute. Three times 1.3 is what? 3.9, so that's 3.9 Y, plus three times 1.2 would be 3.6 W. Minus five times 1.6 would be minus eight W. And then minus five times minus 2.5 would be plus 7.5 Y. Mm, that's not right. It isn't 7.5, is it? I was thinking three. I was thinking Arby's. Okay, so let's go back here and erase that because that one's not correct. Let's see here. 
maybe we should just actually write it out here. Uh, 12.5. Okay, now combining like terms, let's see, I've got 3.6 W minus 8 W. Well, if you had 3.6 minus 8, you would take 8 minus 3.6. which would give you 4.4, but it would be negative, wouldn't it? So this is gonna be negative 4.4 W, and then plus 15, 16.4 Y, because 3.9 plus 12.5, 14, carry the one, 16.4 Y. Did I lose you there? Nope, okay. Uh, negative 4.4 W plus 16.4 Y. Okay. Number seven. Simplify three sevenths times the quantity four X plus 28 H plus one third times the quantity four H minus six X. Okay, so distributing, we're gonna get three sevenths times four X, which is 12 sevenths X plus three sevenths times 28 H, 28 over seven reduces to four over one and we have plus 12 H. Going on plus one third times four H, which is plus four thirds H, plus one third times negative six X, negative six over three is negative two over one, so I have minus two X. Again, are you okay with how I dealt with the negative sign there? All right, combining like terms, we'll put the H's together and the X's together. 12 H plus four thirds H would be what? 12 H plus one and one third H, which is 13 and one third H. Okay, and then plus 12 sevenths X minus two X. Hmm, that's gonna be plus 12 sevenths X minus, what, 14 sevenths? So I changed minus two into minus 14 sevenths. So I get minus two sevenths X. So I've got 13 and one third H minus two sevenths X. Hmm. It says if needed, write the numer numerical coefficient as a reduced fraction. Do not use parentheses. So I'm not sure it's gonna take the mixed number because of the way it, it says that. Let's see, 13 and one third would be 40 thirds. H minus two sevenths X, okay. I'm curious what they're gonna do there. Hmm. Yep, they went, with the, they went with the fractions. So I've got 40 thirds H minus two sevenths X. Now you might say that's not the same thing they've got. Well, it is because you could take these two terms and switch them around. I just put them in alphabetical order. Anyway, any questions there? All right, number eight coming up. 
solve by the addition property of equality. Four fifths plus h equals two eighths. So we're actually going to subtract four fifths from both sides of the equation. So we get two eighths minus four fifths. Well, I could reduce two eighths to one fourth. I don't have to, but I could do that. And then my least common denominator would be 20 instead of 40, if I just left it like that. So let's see, 1 fourth times 5 fifths is 5 twentieths. 4 fifths times 4 fourths is 16 twentieths. 5 twentieths minus 16 twentieths is negative 11 twentieths. So negative 11 twentieths. When I'm only using a small fraction like that, I can just use the slanted key on the regular keyboard. Not a small fraction, but one that's not complicated, I guess I should say. All right, number nine. Solve by the addition property of equality, h minus 16 equals negative 10. So we'll add 16 to both sides. Negative 10 plus 16 is six. So H equals six. Okay. Number 10, solve three T plus 10 equals 19. We're going to isolate the variable term, first of all, and then isolate the variable. OK. Going on. Nine minus four Z equals negative three. So we'll subtract nine from both sides to isolate the variable term. Then we'll divide both sides by the coefficient of Z. Negative divided by negative is positive. So we'll isolate the variable. Number 12, k over 2 minus 1 sixth equals 1 fourth. We'll isolate the variable term by adding 1 sixth to both sides of the equation. Now I have k over 2 equals 1 fourth plus 1 sixth. To add the 1 fourth and the 1 sixth, I need a common denominator, which is 12. So 1 fourth times 3 thirds is 3 twelfths. 1 six times 2 tooths, two tooths is 2 twelfths. So k over 2 is 5 twelfths. But now to get rid of the 2 in the denominator on the left, I'll multiply both sides by 2. So k equals 2 over 12 is 1 over 6. So k equals 5 six. All right, with that. Sorry, my phone keeps beeping and it's distracting me. I need to move it further away, I guess. Okay. So much for turning it off. Number 13. Solve 12 minus Z equals six. We'll isolate the variable term by subtracting 12 from both sides. Now the coefficient is a negative one. So I'll divide both sides by a negative one. 
negative divided by negative is positive. Z equals positive six. I suppose I should be checking my work here. 12 minus six equals six, six equals six, it checks. Okay. Fourteen one half z plus one seventh equals four fifths. So I'm going to subtract one seventh from both sides of the equation to combine the four fifths and the minus one seventh. Common denominator is thirty five. So I multiply four fifths by seven sevenths to get twenty eight. 30 fifths, and I multiply 1 seventh by 5 fifths to get minus 5 30 fifths. 28 minus 5 is 23 30 fifths. So 1 half z equals 23 30 fifths. To get z by itself, I'll multiply both sides by 2. z equals 46 30 fifths. I can't reduce that. And it says right as a reduced fraction. So I don't think they want a mixed number there. So we'll go with 46 divided by 35. All righty. Going on. Number 15. 4 minus 2 fifths W equals negative 11. Isolate the variable term by subtracting four from both sides of the equation. Negative 11 minus four more is negative 15. Ah, now I have a coefficient that's a fraction. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative two fifths, which would be negative five over two. So this reduces down to one times W or W, and this becomes 75 halves. So 75, whoops, 75 halves. In algebra, they don't tend to use mixed numbers much. The only time you would use mixed numbers uh, is typically like in an application. For instance, um, let's say that I needed uh, fabric. You wouldn't go to the store and say, I want 75 halves yards of fabric. You'd say, I want, let's see, whatever half of that is, 30, uh, 37 and a half yards of fabric. Okay, so in that context, the mixed number would be appropriate. But if it's just part of solving an equation, they tend to go with either fractions or decimals, but not mixed numbers. That's not a hard, fast rule. That's just kind of generally speaking. All right. 16, solve 1.3G minus 4.7 plus 2.1g equals 8.9. Well, first of all, I can combine like terms. 1.3 plus 2.1 is what? 3.4g minus 4.7 equals 8.9. Now I'm gonna isolate the variable term by adding 4.4 to both sides. And I get what, 13.3. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by 3.4. And let's see, on my calculator, 13.3 divided by 3.4. Oh, it says if needed, write as a reduced fraction. Well, I got like 3.91176. I got this awful thing, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and check my work. 3.4, that seems, oh, I see a problem already right there. 
and incorrectly. Yeah, you were on there, weren't you, Eric? Okay. I, yeah. Let's see here. Let's just do this. Let's just start this whole mess over. Please. I've done that. <laughs> What's that? I've done that. Yes, yes. I just did that to show an example so that you'd feel better about doing it yourself. Right. <laughs> if you believe that, I've got some swampland for sale. Nobody's <laughs> perfect. Yes. Okay. We're going to add 4.7, 3.4 G equals four. So this is going to be 13.6. And I'll just bet you that that divides evenly. Let's see here. That's why I was suspicious. 13.6 divided by 3.4. Oh, yeah. You know, do you ever watch the game Wheel of Fortune? Have you ever seen yeah. it? And, and sometimes, you know, you're watching the game, and sometimes the contestants make a really dumb move. They'll be like, <laughs> somebody just asked for the letter H. Why are you asking again? Well, it's the whole idea of being under pressure, you know? You guys are sitting there. There's no pressure on you. It's all on me. So I've, you know, I've, I've got to be careful and I'm, I'm nervous and, you know, well, maybe not that bad, but that's my excuse. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right. Let's put, let's see if this is a four. Hopefully it is. Yes. All right. 17. Solve. 2w plus 4 equals negative 2 minus 4w. Ah, so we're going to get all the terms with the variable on one side of the equation. I'm going to put them on the left. So I'm going to add 4w to both sides, which gives me that. Then I'm going to put all the constant terms on the other side, that is the right side. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So now I've isolated the variable term, took all that work. Then I'm going to come back in and isolate the variable. So w equals negative 3. I keep talking about checking my work and then I don't do it. So we're going to put negative 3 in the place of w. Let's see here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I made another mistake, didn't I? Oh, wait. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. Hang on. Yep, sure did. Sure did. Boy, it must be time to quit. And uh, it is. I didn't want to say nothing because oh, I thought you were showing me something new. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing you something new, how to screw up two problems at once. It must be time to quit. I'm making all these mistakes, and, and it is, but I'm going to finish this one problem, and then tomorrow we'll pick it up from here, maybe, unless, you know, I've, I've gone off the edge completely, which is always possible with me. Okay, so we're going to add 4w to both sides, which gives us 6w plus 4 equals negative 2. We're going to subtract 4. Oh, but I do want to point this out. When I was checking my work, that's when I discovered a mistake. So there's the reason to check your work. Yeah. So I did it on purpose just to show that. Okay. I might be lying right now. So now we'll divide by 6. W equals negative one. Now let's check our work. Two times negative one plus four equals negative two minus four times negative one. Negative two plus four. Two equals negative two plus four. Two equals two. It checks. All right. So I'm going to stop there. We'll pick up with problem number 18 tomorrow. So objective or outcome. Number three, 18 is where we'll start. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.